Welcome everybody. This is the Thursday evening Viper training webinar. You're here to learn about trading uh, Viper uh, indicators on the futures markets. You are absolutely in the correct place. Tonight's topic is try to see the trade ahead of time. Should be very timely. Um, and we'll uh, let's get through our disclaimer so we can get over to some charts. Here we go. All communications from Viper Trading Systems are for educational purposes only. Futures trading does involve risk, and there is a risk of loss. Nothing contained in this webinar, other webinars, including the live trading room, are to be construed as investment or trading advice. And, of course, everybody in here tonight does know that you do trade at your own sole discretion. By the way, if you're coming in late, don't worry. If you have to leave early, don't worry. Uh, this is going to be fully recorded. And after it renders, we'll post it to the website. We'll get it on the members area. I think Gary said he might put it on the on the uh, webinar page too. By the way, for you visiting, you go to vipertradingsystems.com. This is our toolbar, this little sort of three-line thing right here. And you go to webinars. Uh, I don't know. There, I think there's like 12 or 14 here. Um, you know, especially if you're on a free trial, if you're visiting this week. Um, all the terminology is here. They, sh I, you know, we show all kinds of different trade setups. Make sure you visit this. If you got a little bit of free time over the weekend, go in and watch a few of these. They're really good. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take the sweater off. Stand by. Man, I was burning up there. Whew. About to start sweating. All right, let's go over to some charts here. Um, stand by. All right, so I'm going to start with the Russell. Now, here's what I'm going to do. Um, some of you are completely new. Um, I see your brand new faces in here. And so uh, just a quick, like, 30-second overview of what you're looking at so it can make sense while you're looking at it. Um, uh, we are connected to a data feed to our broker, NinjaTrader, and we are exclusively on the NinjaTrader platform, which means that our, our C-sharp uh, software indicators from Viper run on that platform. They are as follows. The background colors, green, red, and this intermediate color here. Bar colors, blue, yellow, and red. Now, if you were just connected to a data feed, and you had a four-range chart here with nothing on it, um, it would be extremely difficult to uh, to see and take trades because it, essentially the, all, you would just have bars just kind of going all over the place. They go up down here, and then they spike up. They go kind of sideways and up here and what have you. And so what, what our indicators do is they provide a framework by which you can make trading decisions. That's why we wrote the indicators many, many years ago. In fact, I think it's going on 10 years now. We actually started on uh, eSignal 10 years ago and uh, started a little room and st you know sold some indicators. And everybody said, hey, you know what? If you go over to NinjaTrader, we'll come in and pick those up. They're looking pretty good. So off we went. We ported everything to Ninja. I think that was 98 or 99 or something like that. Was that 10 years? 2009, 2008, something like that. Anyway, so then, you know, we opened the room, and then we started doing training, and then, of course, here we are. Now, back then, things looked a, di a little bit different than what you see here. We had different setups. There was a short period where we used some time-based bards. Some of you might, old-timers might remember that. We used to take guidance from, like, a, remember, like an hour, 30-minute chart, and then intermediate guidance from a 15, trade, like, a 3 or a 5 or 1 minute, whatever. We got away from that because... We think the range bars are much more consistent in the signals they give for you to take trades. Now, I want to address uh, two different approaches that um, we need to sort of, you know, if you're going to learn and trade this system, you can make it, how would you say, um, you can make it as simple or as complicated as you want to. Okay? Now, let me explain what I mean by that. 
and this is going to take us to the seeing ahead of time thing, uh, which, of course, is our topic tonight. So first, we're going to discuss when a market is in an uptrend. So, of course, we look to take long trades primarily only. There are exceptions to that at news events and inventory numbers, and I won't talk about all the exceptions. Let's just keep it really simple. Ikahula auna. It's an old Hawaiian saying, simple y better. All right, so for now, if you're in an uptrend, you're taking long trades only, and we're going to take them on retracements or pullbacks. Everybody knows that, right? That we should just, we need to commit this part to memory. This part should be sort of ingrained in your um, subconscious where you don't actively think about it. You see a green background. You see primarily blue, blue bars. You see that the mid-band and all the bands are stair-stepping up. You know pretty certain that you are in an uptrend. So I'm going to talk about uptrends only for now, and then we'll talk about short trends. Now, in order of preference, we like retracements. Um, and this is kind of our go-to trade. Most of you know this, and I'm going to show several of these, okay? We like retracements back to the mid-band, and we're going to define that for you in a minute. Okay, I'm just going to start with that. This, if you, and I strongly urge everyone here, that if you're, you're trying to pick this up and you're trying to, you know, maybe you're in SIM or maybe you're starting to uh, transition into a, in a combine account with you know one up or or a top step, or you're in a free trial somewhere with one of them. Um, the most basic trade we have is is a mid band trade. Now, if you look at this chart from here to over here, you can clearly see that the background it was green transitioned into green, and the bars were primarily blue. And the mid definition of the bands was met by the mid band and all the band stair stepping up. So by definition, this area right here is an uptrend. So let me define a mid band trade. Now this was overnight, uh, Sunday going into Monday, I think, or maybe this this is the 15th. Okay, midnight Pacific was right here. I'm here in California, so I'm in Pacific time. So just adjust that. Add three hours if you're on the East Coast. Okay. Now. What happens in a trending move is you have what's called this notion of thrust and retrace. Now, in an uptrend, you have the thrust is up. The background will turn green, bars are blue, and you see the mid-band and all the bands are stair-stepping up. By definition, a mid-band trade is defined as follows. Anytime a market, any market, gold, oil, it doesn't matter, pulls back into this area right here, defined as the mid-band itself here. In other words, you can see that these bars are actually physically sitting on the mid-band. So that, that's about as mid-band as you get. It's physically sitting on the mid-band. So are these bars right here, sitting on the mid-band. That's, that's, mid that's as mid-band as it gets, <laughs> physically sitting on it, okay? All right, and then sometimes it'll come into this area in the band above it, Sometimes it'll go a little bit below, like the wicks of these candles, into the band below it. But that's perfectly acceptable because while we are in this zone, that by definition is a mid-band trade. Now, before we go on to the other types of trades, let's look at some mid-band trades together so we're all super, super clear. And I'm going to stick with the uptrend for now so that we all get comfortable. And I'm going to just show a couple, okay? And then, and then I'm going to pop a couple up like in real time, and you're going to tell me if they're mid-band or not. So I'm going to do a little quiz here in about two minutes, okay? Now, most of you know, of course, we use the semi-automated tool called Object Trader, where we take literally a region box and engulf the candles at the mid-band like such. In the case of the uptrend, we are enabling only the long side unless there is a news event or... Like I said, inventory or some, you know, the open things are rolling and coasting around, or it's like a non-farm payroll day where you make some exceptions on that. Now, the way the region box is configured is that once the bar closes by the default, is that once a bar closes outside of the region box with long only enabled, 
a market order is fired long for however many lots you have in the system. So it's one, you know, two, three, four, if you have multiples. And I just want to talk about the entries right now. And I'll quickly explain how we manage the trade maybe a little bit later. I'll just quickly cover it now. So essentially what we want to do on almost every trade, especially if you can, you want to trade two lot, two contracts. And the reason for that is you want to take off a scalp. On the Russell, you're probably looking at about eight ticks, maybe 10, six, eight, 10. You have to sort of measure that on the, depending on how large the range is. So what that physically means is that you put a object trader would put a target right here that would be filled on this bar right here, taken out, and your initial two lot stop, which is probably 10 or 12 ticks down here, would now go to one because this one's gone. It's an OCO, right? And then what you want to do is get into a free trade condition where the remaining trail stop comes up to here on hitting the uh, scalp target. Uh, two ticks behind the entry. We like that because now you have a free trade. You cannot lose money. And then very quickly, you can program, uh, set up object trader and quickly move the stop up to here. And your runner probably got taken out somewhere right around where the scalp came out on this little pop here. So I'm not going to cover that on every trade. I want to look, focus more on the entries themselves. But that's more or less the mechanics of how the trade works. Each trade is like that, both on the short side and the long side. Let's look at some more mid-band trades. Okay, here you can see that the uh, uh, bars are sitting, like, once again, right on the mid-band itself, constituting a, a mid-band trade. Long only, trend is up. Filled on the close of this bar long. Similar condition, scalp trade to lot. Trail stop taken out here. Let me advance and look at some other long trade conditions. And I'm going to start doing a little bit of a pop quiz to make sure, first of all, everybody's awake. <laughs> okay. Everybody awake? Did you drink your espresso? All right. Now, I'm going to advance the chart in real time. I'm going to help you out. And I'm going to tell you that this is going to be long trades. Okay. But when you see a mid-band trade, you type in M. I'm going to start it at 10 o'clock on, uh, I think this is the 16th. Is everybody ready? I'm going to advance the chart in real time, and based on what you know as of right now, when you think you see a mid-band trade, you type in the letter M. Okay, are you ready? Don't type it in now. I haven't started yet. You can see we have a thrust to the up condition. Background is green. We're taking long onlys. I'll help you out with that, right? And so here we go. 1009. 10 10 10 10.39. 10.32 on this particular morning. 10.47, we're about mid-morning now. 11.02, here we are at 11.02 on the Russell. Remember, we are looking for mid-band trades, and when you believe you see a mid-band trade, you will type in the letter M, signifying that you recognize that there is a long mid-band trade. Okay? All right, keep going. 11.04, 11.15, 11.22, 11.30, Eleven thirty-five, eleven forty-two, 11.53 coming up on noon. we got about an hour left in the market, uh, uh, live uh, futures markets on this particular day, 12.08. Okay, I'm going to stop it right there. Now, we got a lot of people in here tonight. Okay, we got an extremely good turnout. Welcome, welcome. However, I am looking at the M's, and I'm only seeing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yeah, see, we only got 14 responses. So some of you are not seeing it yet. Or you are, and maybe you're just not participating, and that's okay. You know, it's up to you. I, I try to do these exercises and make them interactive so that they, you know, you learn a little better and it sticks in your cranium. So look right here, okay? What about is the status of these bars right here. Where are they located? How about these right here? Where, where, where are these bars located right here? Are they anywhere near the mid-band? Are they on the mid-band? 
Now, looking back at it, was this two mid-band trades? What do you think? Somebody typed in there's three. Technically speaking, this would be one here. And you could separate this into two. I see that. One, two. Mid-band trades. Yeah, you got a scalp out of this one. Skip your scalp out of that one. If you re-entered, you're back in. And then, of course, you engage your runner, and your runner gets stopped out over here. All right, let's do one more. Most of you get pretty good. That's okay. Let's do a couple more here. I want to make sure everybody gets this. I'm going to lob up some softballs for you here, okay? I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, in the beginning here when I, yeah, you got your bowl, you, everybody got it, got gold stars. There you go. You know, as you're learning something, you got to, you got to take it slow, right? You got to start with the simple things, you know, and then once you got that good foundation in, you're ready for more complicated subject material. So you can't really learn more complicated trades until you know the mid-band trade, which is the basic trade we take, yes? Now here we go. We're going to start again. This is uh, overnight in the Asian session on this particular day. Once again, we are looking at only uptrends for now. And um, let's, take our, let's take our training one step further. And let me ask a question here. If you were looking to take a trade, in other words, you were kind of, you know, you sort of pull up like a little crystal ball and it's sitting on your desk. And you ask that crystal ball, you say, hey, crystal ball, where might this market go for me to maybe get a trade? Now, if you ask that crystal ball, what would the answer be? Okay, right here, I'll help you. You're in the middle of a thrust and an uptrend coming off this retracement right here. So the market is sitting up here. So I'm going to help you out. The trade is obviously not here. This is a thrust. We're retracement traders. We are looking to get long. Where might we, if anticipating where we might get long, where might that be? Type in an area or a number or anything. Just type in anything. This is the anticipate. We used to have a saying. I forget who came up with this. was a great saying years ago. Anticipate to participate. You like that one? Anticipate to participate. So many times, for instance, while you're pondering the answer to that question, when markets are up here or markets are down here or wherever markets are, you might hear a call, you know, if, if the market comes back to here I, and bounces, I would be looking to get long. Now, on this chart, let me help you out. Didn't we say the sweet spot to get in is located right in here? So now think about that for a second. The market is actually sitting here. Is the market here or is the market here? The market's here. So we're in the thrust part of the move, yes? Now, if we're going to anticipate a move and we like mid-band trades because that's our go-to trade, then your eyes would be focused in this area right here, right? And you would say to yourself, if you're not in the room, or somebody might say it for you, that if the market retraced to here in this area and bounced, we would look to get long. Anticipate to participate, right? Now I'm going to show you what happened. Okay, are you ready? Here we go. This is overnight a few days ago. So coming down. Coming down, coming down. Okay, what is going on right here? What is going on right here, right now, at 2.14 into the European trading session? Let me advance a little bit more. Are these bars right here located in the sweet spot of where we take long mid-band trades, yes or no? Right here. So that's, a, that's, a, that's an expressed question. Is this a long mid-band trade, yes or no? Everybody? Si, senor? Chow? Chowley? <laughs> Mauricio? <laughs> yes, definitely. No question about it. See, si, senor. 
Good. Now, there is another trade setup that I'm just going to mention for now and will not be the focus of this of this uh of this webinar. But they are good trades and you can take them. You hear them in the room all the time. They are minimum criteria trades and one showed up right here. This would be when a market in a long condition, an uptrend, pulls back and closes under stealth in line six, finds support, and then breaks up and continues the uptrade. So this is actually what we call a minimum criteria long trade. Some of you might have noticed that as I was advancing the chart, right? I think somebody actually typed that in. That's good. That's another trade we teach, but it's not the subject material of this particular. I can show that next week. It is really advisable for you to start if you are looking for a, how would you say, jumping off point to learn. Um, I would say that one of the best spots to start would be the mid band. Okay. Simply because, you know, markets can go <coughs> into a minimum criteria trade. Now, that being said, if you want to learn this trade, we have tons of webinars that teach this. There's no problem. You can advance ahead and learn that, no problem, okay? And we have deep retracements where markets come below the mid-band into the outermost band here. Deep retracements are phantoms, depending on the condition. You hear those in the room, too, called out live, right? That's not the focus of our discussion today. We are looking solely at mid-band trades. Now, now that we've covered the long side, it's, it's time to talk about the short side. So if you are going to take a short, and this would be a, a, an example of, and I'm going to show this for you here, a downtrending move where you take shorts. And when you think, yeah, Bashkar, uh, yeah, we'll post the recording on the web and in the member area. Uh, We'll do it later tonight or first thing in the morning. I have to let it render tonight and then post it up on the web server, and then Gary, Gary puts the links up tomorrow morning, so just keep an eye on that. All right, let's talk about a downtrend. Of course, a downtrend is the complete opposite of an uptrend. It is when the market is, is uh, selling off. There are sell programs in control. Um, the thrust moves in the case of the downtrend are down, as you see right here. The background in this case will turn red. The mid band and all the bands, the surrounding bands, will stair step down. You will see a red stealth. The bars are red as well. And we are looking to take short trades only on retracements. Now I'm going to advance this chart, and you're going to tell me what's signifying with another M when you think a short trade sets up. Everybody ready? Here we go. Remember, you're typing in an M when you're ready to take a short. All right, so you can see that Russell is, this is 652 on this particular morning on the 14th. She's pretty much gone into free fall. She's done that early in the morning lately. Run up, run up, run up all night, all night, all night. And then for some reason, those sell programs come in and they just tank the silly market. All right, remember, you're looking for shorts now. Ready? Here we go. Type in an M. Okay, now you're at 702, so I'm sure we got this in the room. Seven oh six AM Pacific time, looking for short entry trades on the Russell. Downtrending market. All right, I'm gonna stop it right there. Now I want to talk about two things. Some of you typed in an M when these bars formed right here. Now looking back at it, was that correct? Right here. Was this truly a mid-band trade right here, yes or no? Does it meet the criteria of a mid-band trade right here, this one right here? No. 
No, I do not consider wicks of candles that just sort of dip into this little area right here. This is a minimum criteria trade. Some of you typed in a couple of you, not many, but a couple typed in, this is a minimum criteria trade. This is a trade we teach, but it is not, in my opinion, by definition, a mid-band trade. Now, a lot of you typed in M's when these bars formed right here. Now, as I've drawn the region box underneath the mid-band, would that uh, mid-band trade have been filled short? Yes or no? This box right here. Would you have ever been filled on it? Here. No. No, you never closed below the box and you never got short. This one maybe got you short if you took a minimum criteria. And that's why, you know, I'm suggesting that for now you kind of hold off on learning those and just focus solely on the mid-band trades. Now, what you do in a condition where the market continues to go a little higher, most of you know, of course, I'm going to state the obvious, blue bars here do not constitute, uh, constitute a trend change. This is simply a deeper retracement on the overall downtrend here. So you would rebox it, short only, and if you did like such, you'd be filled short on the close of this bar right here. Okay, everybody see that? Now, if you didn't get this blue bo uh, bo uh, bell, uh, bar box, was there another chance to take it? What say you, team? You missed the blue bars in that box. Was there another spot to get in? Just a yes, a yes or no. Did you get a second shot? Just a wire in it. Four seconds. Remember, we learn these little ABC patterns. We learn these ABC patterns. They're invaluable to your trading. ABC pattern. ABC is, is, a, is like such. Do we not come down? Kiss line two. Bounce by, back, bounce uh, uh, back up. Kiss the mid band one more time with this bar right here, giving you a secondary short opportunity to get short, more or less getting in on the close of one of these bars right here. Good. Are you getting it? Everybody's getting it. Good. Good. Now, word of caution. Um, everybody should know, of course, there was a couple little scragglers that typed in M's when the market was down here. And I know, you know, we've talked about this in so many different webinars where, you know, what happens is, you know, the market's pulling back, pulling back, pulling back. It rolls over. The true entries are up here. For some reason, you miss them. Okay. And the market's starting to drop and you're getting convinced it's going to tank and it's getting convinced it's going to tank, even though you are clearly in a thrusting down move right here. And you pull the trigger short only to get short at the bottom of the thrust right here. If I'm describing you, you got to break this habit, okay? We rarely ever, never sell or buy a thrust move, particularly when you're at the outermost band. You have to patiently wait for those pullbacks. All right, let's do one more on the short side. I think most of you are getting it, and then I'm going to lob a couple of tougher ones at you on a different instrument. Are you ready? Okay, more short trade entries. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to test you. I'm going to test you again here. Okay, looking for shorts. Find a good juicy, uh, good juicy uh, sell off here. It's been hard because the Russell's been going up so much. You know, it's just been uptrends and uptrends and uptrends. Is everybody ready? This is the final quiz on the short side to participate. This is 7:34 the other morning on the Russell. I'll help you out. You are in a downtrend, and I'm going to advance the chart from 7:34 forward. And when you think you see a mid-band short, you just simply type in an M. Here we go. Don't type it in now. I haven't started yet. You ready? Okay, here we go. Mid-band shorts. I'm doing okay, David. I think I can make it. Thanks for asking. God, I'm sweating really bad, though. That's what happened last time when I got this sort of shaky fever thing. I actually got 13 hours of sleep the other day. I went to bed at like 7.38. I didn't wake up till like 9.30 straight through. But I was just sweating the pison out. You got to sweat those fevers out, you know. You just, you just got to do it. Okay, you're at 7.49 on this particular morning. 7.52. Make the bars substantially larger. 
you're actually technically at 7.54 a.m. Pacific time on the Russell, looking for signified by an M, mid-band short trades. Okay? All right, I'm going to stop it right there. Man, I'll tell you, I mean, the participation is going down in the tubes. I think everybody got uh, uh, Easter fever. Everybody wants that Easter bunny to come and leave a big old uh, Easter basket on the doorstep for you. With some goodies and some eggs in there, huh? Man, only a small handful. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven people typed in an M. Okay, let me ask you a question. Maybe you're just you're kind of zoned out, and that's cool. I'm just going to continue on. We'll just work through this, okay? Are these are these bars right here anywhere near the mid band in the sweet spot of where we take the trade? Yes or no? Okay, remember what I did. We started over here, right? We are reproducing real time on this chart as if we're sitting in the live room together at 7:30 and watching the market move around. That's what that's the purpose of this exercise. Yes. Now look what happens here. We start to pull back. We find a bottom, 85.30. It double checks it. Pushing a little bit lower, a little bit lower. Bips down to 84.50. We start to pull back, 7.52. We enter above line two. This is technically uh, a minimum criteria. We're not talking about that, so I'm not going to focus on these two bars. Excuse me, right? Now, what are these bars right here? As soon as you saw one two, three doji bar, every single person in here tonight should have typed in an M right here, right here, an M at 7.53 a.m. Pacific on the Russell. That's not a reversal. That's a mid-band short. Mid-band short. Kiss and roll. We are getting short. The trend is down. Here's our thrust. Background is red. We take retracements. In this case, we're teaching only mid-band trades. This is the definition of a mid-band trade. It is when, within the sweet spot of our entry. This bar physically wicks the mid-band itself. I don't know how it gets any better than to sit there. Every single person in here tonight, every one of you, should have typed in an M as soon as you saw these three bars, and there's only seven people that did. So I don't know, you know, maybe you're not seeing it. Maybe I'm not teaching this correctly. Um, you know, maybe I'm not showing you so that you learn it. But, you know, I'd say fully 90% of you never even typed in anything right here. And I saw one little M, a little M slip in when this formed right here. And I just told you like less than five minutes ago, <laughs> you don't sell the, tr sell the thrusts at the bottom of the thing, right? All right. Any questions on the short side entries? Let's do this. Let's look at some other instruments. What do you want to see? Type in the instrument, and we're going to look at two, two more setups, and then I'm going to wrap. Everybody's got Easter on the brain here. I don't blame you. I'm tired, too. I'm looking forward to sleeping in for a couple of days and taking it easy, spending some time with the family, get to see my little granddaughter, get her a little Easter basket on Sunday morning, do an egg hunt, go into a park for a huge egg hunt on the Saturday morning. Yes. Anybody else? Crude? Anybody like crude? Any crudy traders here? Looking for calls on instruments that you would like to see. Uh, let me get a ES chart up here. Stand by. Well, you know, it really depends on the day. You know, some days ES is just in those tight, mind-numbing ranges that just drive you completely nuts and then you know and then they break out and it follows the other markets um so you have you know that's an exercise in patience where if you're going to trade es all the other markets are selling off your russell nasdaq ym's tanking you can pretty much count on the fact that es is going to eventually follow it there are exceptions to that but let me show ES this morning okay stand by uh, where the heck is it? Delete all. Here we go. Okay. Let me tee up a, a nice juicy ES chart for you here. Uh, 
Now, this was at 6.53 a.m. Pacific time, and you tell me I'm an advanced ES. Well, it really depends on what's happening, Dan G. Um, if ES is in a funky, let me let me let me answer it this way. Let me let me speak to that question. He's like, which one do you like better? So here is a case, and ES does this a lot. Okay, if you're going to watch and trade ES, I personally prefer a two range. I've also looked at one ranges. This is a faster bar. We teach four range. So technically speaking, you know, you should be trading a four. I like a two. I've done a one. Gary showed those in the room. They are scalping charts. If I if you take that you are going to um, you know, need to practice because the four is much slower, bars form less. You get a lot of granularity on a two and a one, okay? So you know, where you have a couple of bars here, you'd only have one bar on a four. Or a cluster here, like a four in a range, this might be one bar, okay? I like the two, I can see the trades better. You know, when I wanna get in, it gives me a lot of detail. Right at the open, 6.30, 6.31, we called out a long trade here. Of course, you can see that the overnight session, uh, due to strong retail sales in the news, the news bots like that, and the news bots ran the markets up. All the equities pretty much ran in the pre-market session. They leaked some of the news, and uh, sales numbers were good. And then, as you can see here in this consolidation patch, you had a couple of scalps. Bounce here, bounce here, bounce here. We called those in the room. I actually took those. Got little little four, five, six ticky stop uh, or poppers. Now, by seven o'clock, let me show you what happens here. I'm going to pause right here. Right here. I'm going to blow this up super, super big. Is this area right here, by definition, a mid band trade? Yes or no? Four seconds. Just type it in. Boop. Yes. Boop. No. Why? Why? Yes. Boop. No. N. Boop. Three seconds. Cast your vote. Mid-band mid -band trade, yes or no, that box right here. Simple question. Say you, team. Yes. I mean, Christmas. Maybe I'm not teaching this right. I got to go back and re-examine how I teach this. How, how can I be any more explicitly clear? That if the bars are within this area right here, above the midband, on the midband, below the midband, are these bars in this area right here? Yes or no? Are they? Are they here? Yes. How can that not be a midband trade? How can it not be a midband trade? That is the definition of a midband trade. The only way it can be better if the bars physically sat on this blue blue midband right here. Well, a question from Bashar: How do you know when the price approaches a midband, whether we're going to get long and bounce off of it, or continue down through it to get short? Okay, let me help you answer that question. Here's how I'm going to do it. Here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to, I'm going to show you how I do it. I'm going to show you right now like this. Okay, let me clean this chart off. Stand by one second, please. I got to get over to today. Hold on. Stand by. That's a great question, Bashar. Bashar. Here's how I'm going to answer it. Stand by one second, please. I'm coming to show you. I just need one more minute to tee this up appropriately for you. I'm going to recreate the morning at 6.58 a.m. Pacific, which is just, just a, a minute or two before 7. And I want to show this. Just give me one. I'm sorry. My apologies. One more second, please. Six fifty eight to seven oh one to seven oh two. Let me blow it up. <coughs> Got this <coughs> stand by <coughs> sympathy. <coughs> So 
Sorry about that. Now, if you recall, when we first started discussing mid-band trades, if you recall in the first 15 minutes as I was showing long and short trades, did not I say that there are exceptions? Uptrends are long, downtrends are short. However, there are exceptions. What might be an exception? Let's look at it this way. Here we go, right here. Here's 657 on ES. Here is 657 on the Russell. Right here. Where is the Russell located relative to its midband? Here. Where is the Oops, sorry about that. Where is the Russell located at 657 a.m. Pacific time? Where? Where is it in relation to here? Has it gone up? Did it bounce? Did you get a long trade on a green background? Did it bounce here? Yes or no? Out of here. Is this what happened to it? Huh? Trend continuation to the upside? No, it tanked. By 657, that thing had dropped from 72 all the way down to 68. 40 ticks. This market is down 40 ticks. Right here. With this market selling off vociferously, in the room I said NASDAQ is tanking. People were saying that YM was tanking. Every equity that we look at was selling off like big dogs. Now, given that condition, what is the likelihood that this ES is going to go up? I'm going to put a line right here. This is where it was. What is the likelihood, given that Russell is here now, that ES is going to bounce and go up? What is the likelihood of that? Almost nothing. Almost completely nothing. Every single equity market is selling off like big dogs. The sell programs have completely dominated and taken over the market. And so we would enable, in this case, both long and short. Bashkar, can you see that? Can you see why we did that? In the live room, remember the question came up, are you going to let ES go either way, remember? And what did we say? Anybody in the room remember what we said? We said we're going to let it go both ways given what the Russell is doing. All the equities are selling off. There is a likelihood that ES is going to break suit, break support, and follow the other markets down. So this is an example where, technically speaking, I understand a lot of you typed in, and you, I know I'm hearing you, I understand. You said, Charles, look, this is a green background. The trend was up over here, okay? Aren't we supposed to be looking for long trades? Well, this is a case where the circumstances of the market conditions on other instruments around it have influenced how ES is going to trade. And clearly, you can see we took the short, then we wrote it all down. That is why we are in that room to help you, okay? We're looking at all kinds of charts. I have four huge screens here. I'm looking at all manner of things going on. I got a NASDAQ, I got YM, stuff you're not even looking at, and um, getting a real sense of what the market's doing. Now, we actually missed the first leg of this Russell, right? Remember? It just came and it just tanked. I mean, this, this literally plowed through here in like, in like, four, like less than 15 seconds. You had to have a sell order right here or slap a box up there. I mean, literally, this broke in less than a minute. There was just no time to catch it. And you know what? The Russell's been doing that. I don't know why. Just at the open, they run this silly thing up all night, and they jerk, jerk, jerk around. They put it in the double top, come down here, and babango. All week, kachunka, sell-off, algos kick in. Now, that being said, was there a spot where you could have taken a short subsequent to this drop right here? on the Russell. And where is it? There's your thrust. Was there a retracement that occurred that allowed you to get in if you missed this initial box, yes or no? And you can just say, I don't even put in a yes or a no if you don't know, or you think you can call it out if you see it. 
or your time, you can put a time in there when you see it, or a level in here where you see it, or you can just simply type in a yes or a no, either way, however you want to do it. <coughs> Don't know? How about these bars right here? What do you think about those? Are they looking pretty juicy? I mean, you're literally within three ticks of the mid-band right here. Is that a retracement that you could have taken short? Did we call this live in the room as it occurred? Did I actually physically take this trade? Yes, as to all that. We called this out ahead of time. Remember? Remember your number? I said if that gets anywhere near 65.60 and kisses and rolls, I'm taking that Russell short. Remember? Every single person that was in the room should remember that number. I called it out, and I took it myself. Now, look at what happened. By the way, just to set expectations here, here you're at 704, and ES starts to retrace. You do technically get a little bit of a, of a uh, minimum criteria trade there, and then it continues to drop. 704, heck, you're all the way down here on the Russell. Look at this. You're all the way down here forming a bottom at 702, 704. And 702 is only right here. This is only, ES only dropped this much. It's still a good trade. You made good money on it, okay? And then let me let me work this out. Then we continue to drop ES, drops, drops, drops. We get a kiss and roll on the Russell here. We tank. Is this another entry potential right here? Mm, when you're selling off, that's tight. We called it out. You're wicking up into the minimum criteria. We're not really covering that. This was the entry up here. And then we just got 60 ticks sell off. I mean, this is like 70 ticks here. That's 350 a contract. If you put one lot on here, two lot, this is 700 bones, seven bones, seven bones on a two lot. Just this leg right here. Say you missed all this completely. You just didn't get any of this right here, none of it. And you sell that rollover and you trail, 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 and you take it out down here. That is seven bones on a two lot. How many of you would be done if you made 700 bucks by 728? Anybody? Show of hands. How many of you would be done at 728 if you made $700 less commission? Show of hands. Okay, this is what we call one and done. Same with the S. This thing was 350 a lot right here. From here down to here. 700 on a two lot. You could have shorted YM. You could have shorted NASDAQ. They all sold off. We call this one or two and done. You nail the trade, you take it, you manage it intelligently, you stop out, and you're done. Nicely green, turn off the machine. You go into sim, and you practice. All right, good. That was a heck of a morning, wasn't it? Hey, listen, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up now. Do we have any final questions? I got to go, uh, I got to go, honestly, lay down for a while and try to get this fever taken care of. Have a great uh, good Friday, everybody. Have a fantastic Easter.